Hi, Steve Taylor with Think HR and Insurance Services. We make benefit plans you understand so you can actually use them. In this video, we're going to go over questions I get from HR managers, founders, and C-level folks who are in charge of managing their benefits. Employees come to them, they ask them questions, and a few of the questions can be difficult to answer. So I'm going to give it my best shot as a broker and using my experience in helping people walk through this step by step. So let's dive right in. First question on the board. Okay, this came from a group out of New York City. And one of their new employees asked, why are the premiums so high? They came from another company and they're just like, why are our premiums so high? Okay, well, hey, that's that can happen. So in this scenario with this group, the company is Citus State or HQ headquarters is in New York, New York, New York in Manhattan. Manhattan has very expensive health insurance, especially for the small group. Why? Well, lots of reasons why. Really, when it comes down to it, it's not always the fault of the employer and the plans that they chose, but it can negatively affect you. If you're in New York State and you have an employee that was living in Florida and they just moved to New York, which this was the case, all of a sudden it's like, hey, yeah, these health insurance plans are two or three times higher. And they're not as good as what I had before. So how do you explain that? Number one, just be transparent with them. Just let them know. Hey, um, you know, we do our best to pick our plans. If you have any feedback on the plans and, you know, what exact health care needs you have that are not being met by this, then, you know, we invite you to, one, chat with the carrier, talk about some of the specifics. And if this is in any way negatively affecting you and your ability to get health care, please give us some feedback we want to know. Now, this is where you do want to be careful. You can't necessarily ask them for feedback and you don't want to know if Jim's got gout. You don't really want to know if, you know, hey, I'm worried about, you know, going bald um, or like somebody has cancer because then that could negatively affect you as the employer if you made a decision, say, to let that person go. Um, they, they could circle back and say, well, you know, I think it's because I was too old, too bald. Um, I was, you know, because I had a sickness, I was making the premiums go high. I was here. I've been hearing all kinds of things. So you do want to emphasize the importance of one, the individual, you do want to make them feel heard. And this might be, if you don't have it already, a chance for you to create some sort of feedback loop with your employees. And by feedback loop, I mean, can you create like an anonymous way to do a survey? Hey, what do you think about the benefits? And so that you don't have things going way off the rails, you may want to have some very pointed questions that you have. Um, if you have questions on which ones you should ask specifically, I do think you should tailor those specific to your organization and your goals. Um, happy to do a strategy session with those who, who do need help figuring that out. Um, you know, another thing is when you're addressing the concerns of the employees, you also want to take a step back and look at, OK, how different is the workforce? How many people are in their 20s living in the city, right, in New York? How many people are senior engineers, maybe in the middle of Illinois, Oregon, they're out in Montana somewhere like you, you've never really gone? And what type of carriers are actively present in the networks there and how do you make sure that it's affordable for them sometimes these folks they live in montana and like in this example they have one person that lived very specialized engineer lived out in the sticks in montana and he honestly did not care what health insurance he had because he was on his wife's plan he thought it was great another engineer that was a little bit further out there living in utah a couple of counties away from like civilization and for them, they're used to traveling a lot, being out of network quite often. So for them, they didn't really have a big preference other than it has to be a PPO. So that being said, um, you know, when somebody asks you if the premiums are high, you do want to answer the question directly like, hey, well, those are the prices that we have. Um, the only way to really impact the pricing that you have is to pick a different plan design, which means you're going to trade off some of your um, the risk that you retain. And, you know, you if you don't have a good solid answer, you don't have a theory behind 
why you pick the plans that you pick, then sometimes that's an opportunity to say, hey, let me, like our clients, I just tell them, hey, if you're ever confused about a plan, just give me a call. Hit me up on Slack. Um, let's set a meeting where we can actually discuss this employee's concerns. And there are times where, you know, hey, if we pick the plans and somebody feels that way, I want to have a one on one with them and see how we can help them out. Because a lot of times it's just a, a matter of education. Right. There might be one specific uh, prescription that they have that is not covered on this plan, but there's a completely other different benefit that would cover it. Right. We have like companies where I don't know, you can get your Rx or you can get your uh, pharmaceuticals. You can get some prescriptions off of insurance for a lot better pricing. We have vendors that we do that with for certain groups. That might be a good time for us to introduce that type of solution. It could be that the employee just honestly does not understand insurance, never had to pay for it. So, you know, you got to take the why are the premiums so high with a grain of salt? That's just what insurance costs. But, you know, like overall, you always want to listen to the person, their their exact complaints or their qualms with the plans. You also want to make sure that you are being helpful and resourceful. Um, for HR managers, I do tend to say, try to get them to use the carrier as a resource first. Why? Well, because Uncle Insurance is the one that's going to be paying the bill. We pay attention to how insurance works. It's, I go to get services. Then I have my insurance plan. The service company, they ask you, do you have insurance? Yes, I do. And, oh, we're in network. So the insurance company is going to get the bill. But ultimately, you as the patient taking the services, you're really responsible for the bill. And if you have insurance, insurance comes in and they pay whatever cost sharing uh, arrangement that you have. It could be you, know, you got a $500 deductible or a $0 deductible because you, you have $5,000 deductible before they start paying. So when you ask your employees to call the carrier directly, like on the back of their card, nine times out of 10, that's where most of the answers are. I, as a broker, too, love using the carrier resources. And from time to time, um, instead of using the broker hotline, I'll use the employee hotline just to see, hey, how fast are the re response times? Because I want to know if I have employees in there in the middle of the busy season and they're just swamped with work creating the next whatever, I want to make sure that they're taken care of and they're not thinking about their insurance or letting that fog down their minds. So... You know, again, if you if you do get a symptom question, like why are the premiums so high? That's typically how I would answer them. All right. I hope this was helpful in uh, teaching you how to deal with some of these difficult employee questions. These thoughts, I think, are good to share. Um, I don't know where else you would hear them. I've certainly never really heard anybody else sharing some of these things on any platform. But um, I, they're things I wish I would hear along the way so that I can get confirmation on uh, how I could do the right thing for, um, you know, employees along the way. But after doing this for north of a decade, I, I feel like the best way to do it is always hear them out, try to solve their problem and try to direct them to the sources of truth, which in this case would be why are the premium so high? Well, it's our decision on which plans we picked. Yes. Um, how you use the plan. That's our, our best guess, given different things that we have. But ultimately, invite them to go speak to the carrier and use those resources first and then have them come back to you. Why? Well, because you want to be mindful of their personal health information. You want to be mindful of their rights to have privacy. You also want to teach them that they don't need to tell you everything about their health in order to get answers and get um, assistance in picking the right plans or um, just answering simple questions like, why are premiums so high? So. Steve Taylor with Think HR and Insurance Services. I hope this was helpful and you found these office hour questions helpful. If you need anything else, feel free to reach out and let us know.